Hi, I decided to revisit my failed uh, quad walker project that I um, had done. Um, this is the failed project here. It, uh, uh, it was kind of uh, modeled after a uh, design by Kevin McClear um, that he showed the starting of on his on one of his web uh, pi or cast or whatever he does. He does live cast on his thing. And um, I never saw a follow up. I expected to see a follow up with him having it working. I don't know whether he got his working or not, but mine was a total fail. Uh, the appealing part of this was that they were using this uh, breakout board for the P uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W and um, it uh, supposedly lets you connect up to 10 servos or 12 servos to uh, this breakout board and uh, operate 12 servos. I'm in a pr my previous video where I outlined the fail, it, I showed that it was only supplying 3.3 volts to the servos as for power. And uh, that was certainly the pro one of the problems with the uh, not working. So I <laughs> said, set my project on a shelf for a while and thought about it and uh, looked at it a couple times, thought about it some more. And uh, uh, there was, couple things that I think that contributed to the being a failure. One of them certainly was the 3.3 volt power in the servos. But another one was, is that, you know, we're counting on these small servos and uh, you're talking about this big old stick out arm here that you're trying to lift the, lift the body of this robot with a, uh, uh, mechanical disadvantage there. I I kind of liken it to trying to do push-ups with your hands on the floor over your head and trying to do a push-up because you're stretched out so much doing that. So I on my original, I followed. I couldn't use his STL files, but I downloaded them and got measurements off, uh, printed one out and got measurements off of it and redid mine for the servos I was using in Fusion 360. We can go look at that. So this is my version of his, and you can see that, you know, there's a good bit of distance between here and the pivot point, and uh, that's um, something I think contributed to it. So one of the things I did was uh, redid it, and I kind of shortened this up as much as I could I saved about three quarters of an inch distance on those. So um, certainly a much shorter, about 25% shorter uh, length here so that hopefully we get a little bit more torque when enough to lift our robot up. But uh, so that was the mechanical part that we I did. But of course, like I said, we had to do something about the electrical part. So um, I thought about trying to redo the uh, breakout board they had, but cutting traces. And I was looking, and you really can't tell what's going on on there. So it didn't seem like a viable option. So I actually uh, made design my own board and uh so uh this is a uh, my version of the breakout board um the pico has 10 on the one side it has 10 uh outputs and on the other side i think it's 16 or something like that and um uh, pin you know gpio pin so I figure, well, I'll break out all 10 on this side and break out 10 of them on this side. And uh, I like to be symmetrical. So we got option to plug in up to 10 servos here. And uh, then, uh, like I said, we're definitely bringing five volts to the power on these things. And 
have nice big traces. That's another thing I don't know about how wide their traces were on there. You need wider traces if you're going to transmit, you know, have a lot of power in that um, thing. So my traces are nice and wide here. For But your signal doesn't have to be as wide. But anyhow, a couple other things I did is, like I said, I put a power switch on it. Uh, put a, I usually on almost all my boards, I put a smoothing capacitor out just in case, you know, you're drawing a lot of current or something and you want it to capacitor to make up the difference for a while. So I got a 10 UF capacitor on it. Also, uh, the Pico and the Pico W that never brought out a reset board reset button. They have a reset pin, but they don't, their board doesn't have a reset on it. So I did add the reset board reset so that you can uh, reset them if you need to. Um, that's one of the things when it first come out, everybody said, well, why is it missing the reset? I, I really don't know whether it's needed, but if you're making a board, you might as well put parts in that you need. Um, I also brought out, like I said, this is all five volts, but uh, figured I better bring out some plain header pins for uh, uh, ground and also 3.3 volts. You never know if you're going to have to hook something else, else up to it. And uh, same thing on this side, just because I like to be symmetrical. Another thing I did was uh, the ultrasonic sensor, the HCSR04. Um, I have the models that have the um, uh, five volt, uh, only work with five volts, and I didn't want to have to buy another one. So I wanted to use that. So we're bringing in the uh, five volts, and uh, we're using two of the pins here. Let's see this one and this one but the second pin the echo pin it's going to be getting a five volts coming off of the s of the echo thing so i'm running it through a voltage divider so that we don't blow our pico up with five volts coming into an input pin uh so that it's going to get it down to a re usable level for that so and that's what the front four of these are. And the back four, I'm just bringing out uh, the extra four pins that I had on the Pico. Probably never use them, but you just, like I said, if you're making a board, you might as well bring out all the parts, all the pins that you can. I mean, you know, it just doesn't make sense not to do that. Anyhow, that's what... I got and they like said I was my thought was that we you know that uh you can to use a five volt power bank to power these things. Let me make myself a little bigger here. So on my uh five year old, seven year old project to do my uh walking robot that I've mentioned in a previous video we powered them with these power banks these uh old style power banks it just i think it's got an 18 uh, 650 battery in it but it but it has the uh, circuitry and chips to bring it up to five volts so you get a five volt output out of this and um it worked well for the walking Bob robots that we had, and they had they have four of the uh, SG ninety servos in it, and it worked just fine. So, I was my plan was is probably to use this on uh, this robot. Of course, it has eight eight um, servos compared to four, so uh, I'm not sure how long a little battery like this was going to work. I, of course, it's the same battery that we were going to use for the uh, breakout board, the Wuhan breakout board. So I don't know. But uh, as I was preparing to do this, um, I uh, took a USB cable, a charge only USB cable that I had that 
actually can't, comes with some of these uh, power banks. It's got a micro USB on one end and a USB on the other. So I cut off the the cable and because uh, I wanted to wire it right to the board. And uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but those wires are really, really thin. So I, I ordered my breakout boards and it was just a couple dollars extra to get, you can either buy a five or 10. So it was a couple dollars extra to get 10. So I ended up getting 10 of them. So I got plenty of these to play with and assuming that I didn't make any mistakes on the board design. Um, I'll have several of them to play with. So I'll probably try this power bank on one of them and see how that works. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I got to thinking, well, I, I, you know, is that really the way to go with this little thin wire and everything? So, um, I wanted to see what you, what else I could do. So, Decided to check out the um, RC industry. I don't do much with RC industry, with RC stuff, radio control cars or copters or drones or anything like that. But I figured they had to have something that was available. So um, this is a um, uh, BEC uh, battery eliminating circuit. So, you know, uh, if you have uh, servos on an airplane plus an electric thing or something like that, then uh, you need five or six volts to it to, to make the servos work. But uh, motors on these things usually work at, you know, 7.4 or 11.1 .1 volts or whatever, you know, the multiples of the 3.7 volt battery was. But, um, uh, I knew that they had these battery eliminator circuits to get that. So this one here, bring you can get four amps out of it, uh, continuous from a seven volt battery. So um, I did got that, and I also found these two batteries here for a good price. Now I don't know. <laughs> You, there's always trade-offs with these things. So these batteries are probably three times the weight of the of an 18650 um, battery. So we'll be trying to lift more weight with our, uh, our things. But um, one of the things that you know that you can do with this uh, battery eliminator circuit is you can uh, get six volts out of it as well rather than just the five volts so um that works out well um you know because this our servos will run up to six volts it says fine so figure might be better to get that extra voltage and maybe that we'll be able to get to have enough torque to lift the robot that way or the quad walker that way um, but let's go back to the Circuit. So with five volts, you are, I went to the uh, data sheet for the Pico W and uh, they tell you, they show you on there how to power uh, from an outside source. If you're not using the USB, if you want to power it from a, another source that you, um, you can bring in up to 5.5 volts and then go through a Schottky diode. Uh, the reason they're using Schottky diodes, it's really a regular diode, but it has a lower voltage drop across it so that um, you uh, don't have too much voltage there. But, um, and then it goes to V sys, and then it goes into the Pi. So I have that underneath, you know, the, the the Pico is going to be sitting on headers on top of this. So this is going to be underneath of it. And uh, that's what they recommend for up to 5.5 volt. But um, 
if I use the six volts, if I got, you know, this is coming with five volts more on it, but if I uh, move that jumper on that battery eliminator and use the six volts, I can put a regular diode in here instead of a shocky diode. A regular diode has about a 0.7 volt drop across it. So uh, if I'm using six volts, it'll drop it down to that uh, um, about 5.3 volts, which is should be within the limits of the uh, what the Pico wants. So uh, I think I'll be good there. So I'll be able to get six volts out of this and uh, hopefully be able to pick up that uh, big, uh, uh, the bigger battery. Like I said, it's a trade off. So you got the, you either got these little itty bitty wires, or I think that that battery eliminator, let's see if I got a picture of it. They got, you know, I think they're, 18 gauge wire or something like that, but they're definitely a lot bigger. Um, so we'll be cutting off these little connectors they got. Um, but this thing is basically just a uh, step down transformer uh, type circuit there, but um, there's no way that I would want to try to design anything like that into a board. So that's not not anything I wanted to do. So you can buy these things for $15. It just didn't make sense to mess with it. So anyhow, that's where I'm at on the project. It went from uh, some 3D printing and using some servos I already had on hand and uh, uh, try, buying a $10 breakout board and a $5 18650 battery and um to i think i'm going to have over hundred dollars in purchase parts in it now uh the cool thing about these boards are like i said this board i ordered uh 10 of these for with shipping was 18 dollars, so they're only like a dollar less than two dollars a board so um that really wasn't you know a big part of the cost of it buying the batteries. And then of course you got to have a battery charger for those LiPo batteries. You just can't plug them in. And then uh, you, um, the battery eliminator circuit. So it all adding up and uh, we'll see, <laughs> see how it works out. Um, I don't know if, I don't, still don't know. Like I said, I don't have the board yet. They're ordered probably be in a week or so. It, um, stuff from Amazon will probably be here in a couple of days or whatever, but, uh, um, of course I had to buy headers, header pins for doing this, and, uh, female headers for this. So that it plugs in and then male headers for the, uh, servo pins. So, uh, I had most of the other parts sitting around the capacitors and the switches I have lots of them sitting around anyhow that's my video update for my uh respin of the uh, uh quad walker so we'll see how it goes thanks for watching